to you all. Uh, we have been uh, talking about uh, conceptual modeling of uh, databases in uh, a previous session. So in this session, let us continue with uh, uh, this uh, subject into some more detail. Uh, and uh, before we continue or before we start with uh, today's session, let us have a brief review of uh, uh, what we looked into conceptual modeling uh, in the previous session. Uh, we, uh, uh, if you remember, we first uh, talked about what does a typical database process uh, or, or design and development process looks like. Uh, we first start with the analyzing the UOD or the, or the universe of uh, discourse and uh, uh, the analysis of the UOD deals as two different kinds of requirements. One is uh, the data requirements and the second is uh, the set of uh, uh, process or, or application requirements. So, so the database runs within an application context like I uh, gave the metaphor uh, 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 in the previous session, a database is like an engine and the application context is the overall body or the car or bus or whatever that, that you build on uh, uh, around the engine. So both are important uh, 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 when we are trying to analyze the UOD. Okay? So, uh, uh, coming to uh, a database analysis or, or, or design of the database uh, system, uh, we first start with a high level description of what uh, uh, the database should handle, right? Uh, uh, and this high level description should not include any DBMS specific uh, terms or DBMS specific uh, issues. Uh, 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 it is mainly meant for the end user, uh, it is mainly meant for us to show the end user saying this is what we have analyzed or this is what uh, we, we have understood by uh, uh, analyzing your um, uh, universe of discourse. And it is mainly meant as, as a conceptualization of uh, what are all the data requirements that, uh, that exist in this domain. Okay? So uh, one of the most popular models for uh, perform, performing this uh, conceptualization or, or building a conceptual schema is what is called as the ER diagram or the ER model, the entity relationship model. Uh, we saw that uh, entity relationship modeling uh, are made up of uh, essentially two kinds of uh, building blocks, entities and relationships. Right? So we looked at the different nuances of entities and uh, relationships and uh, uh, several issues that affect them like constraints and uh, attributes and so on. So let us briefly describe some, uh, some notation. This is not an exhaustive review but a review of some of the main points what we looked at in, uh, in the entity relationship diagram. Uh, an entity type is described by a rectangle like this a simple rectangle and, and an entity type is something uh, which represents a class of uh, entities or objects that, that have an independent existence like a customer is an entity or a, uh, a staff is an entity, account is an entity in, in, in a bank or, uh, uh, or in a company a department could be an entity, manager is an entity and so on. Uh, any logical unit that has an independent existence is called an entity and an entity type is, is an intention or some kind of a schema for a class of entities or for a set of entities. There could be uh, a set of different managers, but all of them share the same uh, attributes or, uh, or the same properties of the entity type called manager. Similarly, there could be several departments, but all departments share the same properties of the entity type called department. Right? Uh, and then uh, uh, entities are associated with attributes which describe the characteristics of the entity. And uh, uh, we saw that uh, attributes uh, are in turn defined by the domains. Uh, uh, for example, the age of an employee uh, uh, is defined by a domain that it should be uh, greater than or equal to 18 years and less than or equal to 65 years uh, typically. Uh, 
right. So, uh, 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 a domain represents the space within which an attribute uh, lies, okay. And even within attributes, there are uh, we saw that there are several kinds of uh, attributes. You could have uh, a normal attribute, a simple attribute, uh, an attribute which takes uh, just one value, or you could have a multi valued attribute. Uh, we gave the example of uh, the color of a peacock. Right? It does not have one color, it has, it has many colors and uh, so it could, it could have uh, different values for, uh, for the same attribute. An attribute could be a composite attribute that is it could contain uh, many sub attributes like uh, first name, last name, middle name and so on. It could be a derived attribute like the, uh, like the age of a person which can be derived uh, if we know the date of birth of the person and the present date. Right? So, so, there are several different kinds of attributes. So, all entities of a given type have the same set of attributes. Right? Now, uh, we also saw uh, what are called as key attributes or what are called as keys. Uh, I have not uh, uh, depicted this here in these diagrams, but uh, key is uh, some set of uh, attributes that can uniquely identify an entity within an entity type. Right? So, uh, if I have a set of employees and suppose employees are given uh, an employee identification number, the employee identification number becomes the key. If they, if they do not have an identification number, we usually have something like uh, the income tax uh, uh, permanent account number called, called the PAN number or something which, which forms the key. Uh, it uniquely identifies a person. On the other hand, we cannot use something like name or uh, age as the key. Two persons can have the same name and of course, uh, two or more people are very likely to have the same age. right? So, it cannot uniquely identify a particular entity whereas, uh, 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 something like uh, the identification number uh, identifies the entity uniquely. Right. So, uh, uh, key attributes identify this uh, uh, entity types uniquely and there need not be just one key attributes, there could be uh, more than one key attributes and uh, uh, like I gave the example of uh, I need not have just one key to my house, I can have two keys one for the front door and one, th one for the back door, fine. But uh, we usually use just one of the keys which the default uh, basis and sometimes use the other key frequently. Right. Uh, and then uh, uh, we talked about what is meant by a weak entity type. A weak entity type is, is a kind of entity type which does not have a key attribute. Uh, we also saw an example yesterday, uh, the example of uh, an employee and, and, uh, uh, and his or her uh, insurance record. Right? So, an employee has a key attribute, the employee number or PAN number or whatever, but the insurance record does not have any existence uh, without a corresponding employee or without a corresponding person to, to be uh, uh, more general, before, uh, without being associated with the corresponding person. Now, uh, once uh, an insurance record is uh, associated with a particular person, whatever way we, uh, whatever we use to identify the person becomes the key to identify the insurance record as well. Right? So, for example, uh, uh, if I identify an insurance record with a person having a particular PAN number, I can as well identify the insurance record with the same PAN number as uh, I am identifying the person. Right? And we saw the second building block which are called relationships between attributes. So, uh, uh, a relationship basically uh, 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 ties in or, or brings in an association between two or more entity types. Right? So, uh, even within relationships there are uh, several different uh, uh, kinds of relationships and uh, uh, we saw uh, uh, certain constraints that uh, identify uh, some kind of relationships. One of the first thing we saw was uh, uh, the cardinality constraint. A relationship uh, which has a cardinality constraint says that uh, says how many entities of a particular type can participate in a relationship. For example, we saw that uh, uh, department uh, managed by manager. Okay, so uh, it could be uh, uh, there could be a constraint that. Uh, uh, a department may have just one manager or one head uh, and uh, uh, one person may manage at most one department at a time. Okay? So, so there is a cardinality constraint that exactly one, uh, uh, one department may be managed by exactly one manager. Okay? On the other hand, if I have something like works in an employee works in department. Okay? So, uh, it is uh, it's, uh, rather than a 1 is to 1 relationship, it is a 1 is to n relationship. One department may have n employees and there could be a constraint that uh, an employee may be associated with just one department. So, that uh, uh, for, for n employees there is just one uh, department. So, okay? And we also saw uh, what is called as an identifying relationship. An identifying relationship is uh, the one uh, is a relationship that uh, uh, identifies a weak entity type with a strong entity type. Right? That is uh, uh, if I have an employee 
and says uh, insurance uh, 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 has this insurance record using some kind of a relationship. Uh, it means that this relationship is giving an identification or an identity for this weak entity type called uh, insurance record, right. So, so such relationships are called uh, identifying relationships and we also saw uh, what is called as a total participation within a relationship, right. So, uh, the, the same thing here an insurance record will have no existence without uh, uh, it is corresponding employer without, uh, without a corresponding person, okay. So, uh, this insurance record is said to totally participate in this identifying relationship. However, we also saw that uh, uh, just because there is a total participation does not mean that the entity type is a weak entity type. Uh, how do we, uh, 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 what is an example for that? Uh, we, we saw an example of department manages project. Okay. Uh, let us say that uh, a project has to be associated with a department otherwise uh, well it will not get funding it, it would not get off the ground or something like that. Okay. So, uh, uh, so in this case this is a uh, this is a total participation that is the, the existence of project the, the, the existence of projects will depend upon this relationship that is uh, uh, the existence of some department that is willing to manage this project. However, a project uh, by itself need not be a weak entity type that means it may have a separate key by itself. A project will have its own separate project identification number which may be which may have no relationship with the department number right. Uh, not every uh, total participation implies identifying relationships but uh, an identifying relationship implies total participation right. So, uh, we will be continuing uh, uh, further on today with uh, some more uh, uh, notations and uh, which can give us greater expressiveness to, to express what we, uh, 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 what we perceive as relationships and uh, uh, associations between uh, uh, data elements in our uh, UOD. Now, these uh, uh, kinds of uh, these sets of uh, notations that we are going to see uh, uh, today are what are called as enhanced uh, ER notations or uh, uh, sometimes it is also called as extended ER notations or uh, 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 and abbreviated as EER notations. One of the first uh, uh, relationships or, uh, or associations that we are going to uh, see today is, is the notion of subclassing or inheritance. Okay. Subclassing uh, essentially face what is called as an is a relationship as you can see in the uh, uh, slide here. Okay. An entity class B is said to be a subclass of another entity class A if it shares an is a relationship with A. What is meant by an is a relationship? Have a look at these uh, examples. A car is a vehicle right a monkey is a primate and a primate is a animal or is an animal whatever okay a manager is a employee right so uh, 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 if you have noticed here an is a relationship identifies a specialization of uh, uh, some particular entity type a car is a vehicle okay but not all vehicles are cars there could be trucks there could be bicycles there could be uh, uh, scooters and so on so a vehicle is a more general class of cars Okay. Similarly, if you say uh, uh, a Maruti 800 is a car, okay, but not all cars are Maruti 800s, right. So, a car is a generalization of uh, Maruti 800 and Maruti 800 is a specialization of the entity type called car, right. Similarly, a monkey is a primate and a primate is an animal, but not the other way around, right. So, uh, uh, so, so, so the entity class B that is uh, uh, at the left hand side of the uh, easy relationship is said to be a specialization of entity class A okay or uh, on the other hand uh, uh, entities of class A are said to be generalizations of uh, entities of class B right. So, what are the properties of uh, uh, generalization and uh, specialization? Have a look at uh, uh, this slides and uh, uh, th there are some interesting properties when we are uh, talking about uh, a generalization and, and a specialization relationship. Now, suppose uh, 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 I have an entity of type car okay uh, so so let us say this uh, uh, this entity uh, with with a particular registration number is a car that exists in the database now in the database i also have some entities of type vehicles now should this car entity type belong uh, uh, in the vehicle entity type if you uh, think about it carefully uh, you'll see that the answer is yes right uh, because the simple reason is that a car is a vehicle if i have uh, an entity that exists uh, uh, in, uh, in, in the set of cars, uh, the same entity should also exist in the set of vehicles, right. So, an entity cannot exist in the database that merely belongs to a subclass, it also has to belong to the super class as well, right. Uh, 
and uh, subclasses undergo type inheritance of the superclass. Okay. What is meant by type inheritance of the superclass? Again, notice uh, 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 carefully here. Now, uh, let us say that we are going to describe some properties of vehicles. Okay. Now, uh, what kinds of properties can, can we think of vehicles? Uh, uh, vehicles will have wheels, okay. uh, vehicles will have, uh, 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 I mean depending on what you call vehicle, I mean you, you could also call a rocket as a vehicle. Okay. So, uh, uh, assuming that we are only uh, looking at road vehicles, uh, suppose I say that uh, uh, a vehicle uh, is represented by wheels and uh, it should have some kind of uh, uh, controlling mechanism, it should have a driver's seat or uh, something of that sort okay. and it should move. Okay. Now, uh, uh, you see that all of these characteristics apply to all subclasses, whether it is a car, a bicycle or, uh, 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 or a truck or a, uh, a van or whatever, uh, all of these uh, have to move, they have to have wheels, they have to have some kind of a control mechanism, whether it is whether it's a handle or a, uh, a steering wheel or uh, anything like that uh, and so on. Right? So, all attributes that describe a general, uh, the, the, the general class has to be inherited by the special classes, okay, the, the specialized classes. Each member of a subclass has the same attributes as that of the superclass entities and participates in the same relationship types. The, the second uh, aspect is also, uh, uh, is also important. Uh, the, uh, uh, if uh, a general class uh, entity participates in a particular relationship type, a specialized class entity should also be able to participate in the same relationship type. Okay? That is, uh, if I can use a vehicle to go from point A to point B, I should be able to use a car to go from point A to point B or uh, uh, I should be able to use a truck or, uh, or, or a bicycle or whatever. Uh, right? So, uh, 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 if there is a relationship that exists between vehicle and uh, uh, let us say an employee using that vehicle, okay? uh, you should be able to replace this vehicle with, with any of the subclasses and the semantics should not change. The, the semantics of the entire uh, database uh, system uh, should not uh, become incorrect. That is why I said we are, we are looking at road vehicles. I mean, uh, it is it's, it's a matter of naming the particular uh, uh, entity. Uh, a car is a road vehicle. Obviously, uh, if I also consider rockets and airplanes as vehicles, uh, 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 th this, this, this does not hold anymore. Uh, using a rocket, let us say, I can go from here to the moon, but I cannot do that using a car. Right? So, uh, uh, so you, you will not be able to replace a subclass. Uh, a subclass entity wherever a superclass entity uh, uh, lies. Okay? So, uh, when you are uh, coming out with uh, inheritances and special uh, generalizations and specializations in your, uh, in your database, you should uh, uh, be aware of the fact that uh, uh, this type of, uh, th this kind of replacements of, uh, uh, of general class entities with, uh, with special class entities should be possible. And that is what uh, uh, establishes a correct inheritance relationship with an in, uh, incorrect inheritance relationship. So, uh, uh, here is another example. Uh, suppose I say that uh, manager uh, is an employee. Uh, Okay, or, or a manager uh, could also be an employer. Uh, so, uh, 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 as you can see here, the, the inheritance relationship is depicted by a U uh, uh, in, in the relationship type. That is, there, there is a straight line with, with a U which, which represents an, uh, uh, an inheritance relationship or a specialization relationship. Now, if you note that if this is an employee here okay, and an employee is, uh, 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 is uniquely identified by the PAN number the same uh, PAN number can uniquely identify the manager as well. Right? So, so, what does that mean? It means that uh, any key attributes uh, that uniquely identifies, uh, uh, that, that uniquely identify uh, entities of uh, uh, a super class or, 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 or a more general class uh, can also identify attributes of the special classes. Okay? However, uh, uh, special classes may uh, may have some more attributes in addition to the key attributes that uh, the, that the general classes have. Okay, for example, a manager may also have one more identification which says uh, uh, for which department he is a manager or what is the scale or whatever. Okay, now in order to be able to uh, uh, identify one manager from from another uh, from another uniquely, you may have to combine that attribute with with the pan attribute here. Okay, so uh, so there may be other attributes. Uh, uh, that form the key for the special classes, but all the key attributes of the general class has to uh, uh, has to be retained in the special classes. Okay, so uh, another uh, uh, example of type inheritance. In 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 this case, it's it's more of a key inheritance. The the key has to be inherited directly. 
uh, the process of creating subclasses out of a given entity type is called specialization. That is suppose I have a particular entity type, suppose I have identified that uh, 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 the, the UOD here uh, uh, requires uh, vehicles. Okay? Now out of these vehicles I identify they require uh, vans, they require cars, they require trucks and, and so on. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, and then I also identify that okay, van is a vehicle and a truck is a vehicle and a car is a vehicle and so on. Okay? So uh, uh, I should be able to form what is called as an inheritance tree. Okay? So this process is called specialization. On the other hand, uh, it is also possible that, that we go in the reverse fashion. We first look at the uh, UOD, we, we first uh, 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 go through the company, talk to people and see what is happening and, and then we identify different entities. We, uh, we see that uh, the company uses cars, the company uses uh, 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 buses, the company uses uh, uh, motorbikes, the company uses trucks and so on. Uh, the company uses vans uh, and then uh, once we are uh, uh, once we have listed all of these we start seeing relationships among them we see that okay all of these uh, are vehicles and all of these share the same attributes as far as the company is concerned okay and then uh, we put all of them in an inheritance tree and uh, and uh, this is what is called as a generalization okay now uh, before we go into the uh, go to the next slide uh, let me interject uh, here uh, to uh, to, to note that this is not uh, such a straightforward process. Uh, 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 which, uh, which entity is, is a special uh, class and which uh, entity is a general class is not such a straightforward process. Uh, sometimes depending on the, the uh, usage context uh, uh, which becomes a general class and which becomes a special class, a specialized class may, may change from, uh, 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 from uh, uh, one context to the other. Let me give a particular example. Okay? Take two entity types. Uh, an airplane and a glider. Okay? Now which is correct? The, the first one which says a glider is an airplane okay? uh, uh, without engines or whatever, a glider is an airplane okay? or an airplane is a glider which is correct. Okay? So if you look at it uh, carefully, let us, uh, uh, let us go back to what are the properties of uh, specialization and, uh, uh, and generalization classes. Okay? The, the first property of uh, uh, a specialization classes is that. Uh, wherever uh, I am planning to use uh, 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 the, the generalized class objects, I should be uh, able to use a specialized class objects. Okay? So uh, is that always true? Wherever uh, I use airplanes, can I use gliders? Maybe and maybe not. I mean, uh, depends, uh, depends on the context. Okay? And uh, secondly, uh, whatever attributes that, uh, uh, that, uh, that the generalized class has, has to be inherited by the specialized class. Okay? Again, uh, this seems to say that uh, 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 let, let us say an airplane has several different attributes. It has engines, it has wings, it has uh, 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 wheels, it has uh, uh, controls and so on. A glider also has all of them except that uh, it does not have an engine. Okay? So it seems to suggest that uh, uh, an airplane is, is a glider is the correct one. Okay? So, so a glider is more general and an airplane is more uh, specific. Okay? So uh, because a glider has a smaller number of attributes and, and an airplane has a larger number of attributes. However, look at it in this uh, 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 in the context of uh, learning how to fly a glider or learning how to fly an airplane. Okay? Now if you see that, uh, uh, let us say I have different uh, paragraphs about uh, or different kinds of skills that I have to learn uh, for flying an airplane uh, and uh, for flying a glider. Okay? It could well be the case that depending on the sophistication of the airplane, there are, uh, 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 there are some airplanes here where you do not have to do anything, you just have to go and uh, uh, plan your uh, journey and uh, push a button and it will take you there okay? uh, uh, with, with all autopilots and so on and so forth and, uh, and so on. Okay? So, uh, uh, so depending on the context, uh, you may actually have to learn more to fly a glider than to learn uh, uh, than to fly an airplane. Okay? So if, uh, if the number of attributes are the different kinds of skills I need to fly this, okay, you see that the opposite uh, uh, inheritance tree is, uh, is valid. That is an airplane, uh, 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 that is a glider is an airplane. That is uh, an airplane requires smaller number of skill sets to, to, uh, to fly uh, while a glider requires a larger number of uh, skill sets to fly. Therefore, uh, a glider uh, is, is a subclass of airplane. Okay? So as you can see that, uh, it is not such a straightforward uh, thing to, uh, to identify easy relationships. It, uh, it depends on the application context and uh, we should not ignore the application context. Like we uh, uh, saw in the previous session, 
a database uh, uh, cannot ignore the information system context within which it is going to be run. Okay. Is the application context about uh, building an airplane or a glider or is the application context about flying an airplane or a glider? Now uh, uh, that, that may change the inheritance semantics in, uh, uh, in our conceptual schema. Okay. So, uh, so, so coming back to specialization and generalization processes, uh, let us take a small uh, generalization uh, uh, example and, uh, and see how uh, we go about it. Okay. Let us say we have identified two, uh, uh, two entity types in our uh, back to our company database. Okay. So uh, uh, let us say we have identified uh, an entity type called secretary and, uh, uh, and the secretary is identified by a PAN and uh, a salary and the, the kinds of skills that the secretary has typing shorthand or whatever and so, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, similarly, we have identified manager. Okay. And we see that uh, uh, manager also has a PAN uh, number, uh, 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 manager also has a salary and there is an experience field saying uh, uh, what kinds of experience the manager has. Now when we see uh, uh, two or more entity types sharing the same kind of uh, attributes for a large extent that is uh, out of three attributes two are, uh, two are similar here. Uh, it gives us reason to believe that uh, probably these two are uh, special uh, special cases of the same general class. Okay, so we can generalize them something. Okay, so so we can create uh, a more general class. Uh, let us say uh, uh, called, called employee, and then uh, say uh, secretary is an employee. Okay, and manager is an employee. So so note that. Uh, the, the the attributes that were first uh, part of secretary and manager uh, have uh, have gone here. That is only the common attributes between a secretary and manager have moved up the uh, hierarchy to, to go to the employee class. Okay, and all those attributes which are specific to to this specialized classes remain in the specialized classes. That is, uh, uh, skills remain here and uh, uh, experience remains here. Now, in some cases, uh, it may be able to. Uh, we may be able to identify precisely uh, how to distinguish uh, one special class to uh, specialized class to another specialized class. Have a look at this uh, uh, slide here. Uh, this uh, this slide shows an entity type called employee, uh, which is defined by uh, attributes called PAN and salary, and uh, the, uh, one more attribute called job type, which is not actually shown here. Okay. Now, uh, 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 there are two specialized classes: secretary and professor. Okay. Now, uh, uh, suppose uh, we uh, identify uh, uh, a property that every professor has a job type uh, as academic okay? and every secretary has a job type called admin. Okay? So, uh, uh, each professor uh, belongs, to a, uh, belongs to a category of academic jobs and each uh, secretary belongs to a, a category of uh, administrative jobs. Okay? So, uh, so, so, we know exactly how uh, entities of one uh, specialized classes can be distinguished from entities of another uh, specialized class. So, so, this is how we identify this, uh, this here. We say job type okay, and then we say admin uh, uh, is secretary and academic is, uh, is professor. Okay. So, such kinds of uh, 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 definitions are what are called as predicate defined subclasses. Uh, th these subclasses are defined by the values of uh, one or more predicates that, that exist in the ER schema. Next, we go to uh, an example where uh, uh, we see that in, in some cases, not all uh, subclasses may, may be unique. Okay? Now, uh, let us take, take back the example of uh, secretary and professor. Okay? Uh, you see here that uh, while denoting this uh, subclasses, we have, we have uh, drawn a circle with, with a small d here. Okay? Now, what does this d uh, denote? This d denotes the fact that these two subclasses are disjoint. Okay. Uh, uh, what, what is meant by disjoint here? That is, uh, the, uh, they are mutually exclusive. No secretary is a professor and no professor is a secretary. Okay. Uh, because all secretaries have to have job type as admin and all uh, professors have to have a job type of academic. Right. So, uh, so, 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 the set of all uh, 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 secretaries is, dis, is a disjoint set from the set of all professors. Okay. But this need not always be the case. Sometimes two or more specialized classes or specialized entity types may actually overlap. They need not be mutually exclusive from one another. Uh, for example, uh, uh, suppose in, in some university there, is, there, is, uh, uh, there are notions of chair professors. Uh, chair professors are usually uh, supported uh, fr from external sources of uh, 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 external uh, funding sources, but for all practical purposes they are uh, as uh, uh, they, they, they work as, uh, as any other professors here. Okay? Now, uh, it could well be the case that uh, 
some professors are chair professors uh, and uh, uh, and some chair professors are normal, uh, normal professors that is uh, they, they need not be supported by a project but uh, but they also work in other uh, activities and so on okay so uh, such kinds of uh, uh, inheritance trees are, uh, are, are subclasses are said to be overlapping subclasses. Okay, so uh, these two subclasses need not be disjoint uh, from one another, and this overlap, uh, this kind of overlapping, may be either partial or, or even total overlap. Okay, now uh, uh, you might have uh, you might uh, uh, notice that every chair professor is a professor, but not the other way around, and so on. Okay, so uh, so it's a total overlap as far as a chair professor is concerned. Okay, on the other hand, uh, uh, if there uh, uh, if there are some chair professors who are not uh, 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 who are not teaching, let us say, or, or who are not uh, uh, do, doing the normal activities of uh, of a professor here, then the the, the overlap is a partial overlap. The next kind of uh, uh, generalization uh, technique that we are going to uh, uh, see is what is called as a union type uh, or this is also uh, called as a category. Okay. Now have a look at this uh, slide uh, 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 a little more carefully. Now this slide shows uh, 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 entity type called account holder uh, in a banking uh, uh, scenario. Okay. Now uh, when you ask a banker uh, who or what is an account holder. Uh, he will probably tell you that the account holder is uh, is just an abstraction it is an entity okay it does not it does not necessarily represent a person okay uh, because uh, it may actually represent an institution an institution may be an account holder or an uh, or an individual may be an account holder or sometimes uh, in, in some uh, 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 in, uh, in some uh, uh, cases uh, accounts may be held by families or sometimes dynasties and so on okay so uh, uh, as far as the bank is concerned uh, uh, all of them are just account holders and they they're just abstractions okay but all of them shared uh, all of them uh, have their own set of uh, attributes and have different sets of characteristics obviously an in, uh, individual is different from an uh, from an institution an institution has characteristics like number of employees and so on which an individual may not uh, uh, which may not make sense uh, for an individual entity type right so uh, so each of these uh, uh, entities here in the in the topmost uh, uh, in in the top uh, rung here may have their own sets of attributes uh, which may not be in common with one another but all of them are account holders here right so uh, so uh, each uh, uh, individual may have its, its own uh, different key uh, for example a pan number for an institution and uh, uh, address for a family or uh, uh, some kind of uh, registration number for for an institution okay but all of them are account holders as far as the bank is concerned so such a uh, kind of uh, uh, relationship is what is called as a union type uh, if you uh, uh, are familiar with uh, programming in, in C programming, uh, you, you have this notion of unions, uh, which has very similar connotations. That is, uh, 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 an account holder is either an individual or a family or uh, or an institution. Okay, uh, a union type is also called a category, and uh, uh, just like we uh, saw in uh, the case of uh, um, uh, inheritance. Uh, where uh, uh, in the in the case of subclassing, where where a subclassing subclass could be either uh, disjoint or uh, overlapping, uh, we can have what is called uh, as a partial union or a, a complete uh, union. Okay. Now, for example, here uh, uh, not every individual that exists in the database could be an account holder. An individual is an entity, uh, and uh, uh, an entity is, uh, is something which has its own independent existence. Okay, so we may be keeping track of individuals for our own purposes. Okay, but some individuals in the database could be account holders. Similarly, we may be keeping track of institutions for some other purposes, but uh, some institutions in our database could be account holders. Okay, so when only uh, a part of the, the, the entity set uh, of individuals uh, form uh, uh, or participate in this relationship, we call this as a uh, partial union. On the other hand, if every individual that we hold uh, in our database is uh, uh, is an account holder or, or participates in this uh, 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 union relationship, then it's it's a full union relationship. Okay, so uh, that was briefly about. Uh, um, uh, generalizations and, and specializations and in fact uh, uh, this is a very crucial concept uh, uh, in, in, uh, in being able to uh, obtain the notion of uh, abstraction that is uh, to, to be able to abstract away 
uh, uh, unnecessary details uh, from a special class and uh, and go to the general class so uh, so if we are uh, able to say that we are uh, we are going to use an entity type of a general class it means that it has just enough details uh, that is necessary for this relationship to exist okay that means uh, if i say that uh, uh, i need a car for this particular activity okay uh, i don't need to worry about what kind of a car is that what color of the car is that or, uh, uh, or what is the horsepower of that car or whatever uh, uh, it's all those uh, uh, all those attributes are uh, specific to particular kinds of cars but uh, uh, for this particular activity any car would, would do okay so, uh, so so we are uh, essentially abstracting away or uh, covering up all the unnecessary details and looking at only the necessary details uh, uh, what uh, what is required for a relationship to exist right the next uh, uh, concept that we are going to be looking at here uh, is uh, the concept of higher order relationships. Uh, until now we have been considering relationships with a degree of 2. Recall that uh, the, the degree of a relationship is the number of entity types that participate in this relationship. Okay. Now, uh, the slide uh, shown here uh, uh, shows uh, uh, a relationship uh, with a degree 3. Uh, have a look at this uh, relationship carefully. It's, it says that uh, uh, the relationship is called supplies and uh, it relates three different entity types okay the uh, a supplier part and project what is the relationship uh, say uh, or what is the semantics of this uh, uh, relationship again uh, there are three different entity types supplier project and part so uh, basically it means that the supplier supplies this particular part for this particular project okay now uh, 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 if you think uh, carefully uh, it is not possible to reduce this uh, uh, this uh, uh, ternary relationship or uh, or a relationship of degree 3 to uh, uh, a, a any number of uh, uh, relationships of degree 2 okay a supplier may supply some parts but not all parts may be designated for this particular project okay a supplier may supply for a project but he may not supply all parts that uh, that are required for the project okay now a project may use certain parts but uh, uh, but not all parts that are uh, used by a project are uh, may be supplied by just one supplier there could be any number of suppliers okay so so we cannot reduce it to uh, three binary relationships without losing meaning okay let us try to do that and see what what happens okay now uh, the closest possible uh, binary relationship uh, uh, that uh, uh, that tries to simulate this this ternary re, uh, relationship is something like this. Okay, uh, a supplier supplies to a project. Uh, a supplier stocks some parts. Okay, and a part is required by a project, or, or, or a project requires certain kinds of parts. And uh, uh, to be fair, uh, uh, to be sure, we also note that a part is a weak entity type. It has no existence by itself. It has to be either associated with a supplier or with a project. Okay, so uh, even when we do that, this is probably the closest we can come to simulating the the, the relationship, but uh, not not quite close. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, uh, it it can still uh, uh, it uh, just because supply stocks uh, certain parts doesn't mean that uh, this part will be required by this project or or, or vice versa, right? <coughs> Let us take another example of of uh, higher order relationships and. Uh, and see whether we can uh, reduce it to lower order relationships without uh, losing meaning okay so uh, uh, this uh, uh, slide here shows uh, a relationship uh, which which is a ternary relationship called offers okay so uh, uh, it says that instructor offers a course during a semester okay now there are also other relationships that we have identified in the database and uh, uh, which says that uh, uh, instructor taught during certain semester okay or uh, instructor can teach a particular course okay or a course was offered in a particular semester okay now note that uh, if i have an uh, instance of this relationship that is uh, uh, offers isc okay what does isc means uh, 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 if there is an instance of this relationship called offers uh, for a particular instructor uh, in a particular semester for a particular course okay this implies that the, the instructor has taught during this semester and the instructor can teach this course and the, the, the course was offered in this semester right that is taught during IS and can teach IC and offered in uh, 
uh, uh, CS. That is uh, 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 an existence of this ternary relationship implies the existence of all these binary relationships. Okay. However, the converse need not be true. The, the, the converse that is uh, uh, suppose I have uh, instructor can teach uh, instructor I can teach course C okay, and instructor I taught during uh, semester S and course C was offered during semester S. Okay. But that does not mean that the, 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 the same instructor has offered this course during the semester S. Okay. Instructor I can teach uh, this course okay. uh, but uh, and the course was offered during a semester and the instructor taught during that semester but that still does not say that the, the instructor taught the same course uh, during the semester. He could have taught some other course he could have uh, 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 and, and this course could have been taught by somebody else. Right? So, 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 while this is true the, the converse is not true the, the uh, reducing uh, if uh, uh, instances of uh, binary relationships exist we cannot uh, 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 we cannot be sure that the, the, the instance of a ternary rel relationship also exists. Okay? Cardinality constraints on uh, higher, higher order relationships. So, what does it mean when we say uh, uh, when we put cardinality constraints on higher order relationship? Here is an example. Uh, this example shows again the, the instructor semester course uh, uh, example. So, uh, uh, it has put a 1 here and a n here and an n here. Okay. So, so that means that uh, a given course semester combination should have only one instructor. Okay. That is uh, 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 in a particular course for a particular semester there has to be only one instructor. On the other hand a given instructor may have any number of course semester relationship. That is a given instructor can uh, teach in uh, uh, any number of semesters and, and any number of uh, courses. Okay. So, uh, uh, again if you uh, think about this carefully if I have uh, a set of all these uh, relationship types okay, instructor course uh, semester and so on. Uh, how do I identify uh, an instance of this relationship type uniquely? The, 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 the key here is the course semester pair. Okay. So, if I take an instructor an instructor may offer any number of uh, courses in any number of semesters. However, if I take a particular semester and a course uh, you see that uh, uh, it can uniquely identify an instructor that is because uh, every uh, course and semester uh, pair uh, should have uh, uh, just one instructor associated with it. The last concept that we are going to uh, uh, look at in this, uh, uh, in this session is the notion of aggregation. Uh, this concept is usually used uh, in what is called as knowledge management or, or KM uh, in, in, the, in the concept of ontologies and, uh, uh, and, and so on. Okay. Uh, so, so, an aggregation basically uh, 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 aggregates a particular ER schema and makes it into an entity of uh, 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 at, at a higher level of abstraction. Okay. Uh, note, the, uh, uh, note the subtle difference or, or, uh, and, and very important difference between uh, the, the kind of abstraction uh, introduced by aggregation and the kind of abstraction introduced by inheritance or, or specialization. Okay. Aggregation uh, 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 brings about the concept of composition okay, or contains relationship. Okay. So, here this uh, slide shows uh, uh, an aggregated entity called offering okay, which contains uh, one or more uh, instances of the, the, the relationship uh, 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 called instructor course and semester. Okay. So, an instructor offering a particular uh, course in a particular semi, uh, semester is called a course offering or, 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 or an entity type, type called offering. Okay. So, uh, the relationship between uh, the offering entity type and, uh, and this uh, uh, relationship called offers is that of contains. Okay. Offering contains offers. Okay. On the other hand uh, the relationship between uh, generalized and specialized classes is that of is a relationship okay? or rather the, 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 the uh, between specialized and generalized classes. Okay? A car is a vehicle okay? and, uh, uh, and a bus is a vehicle okay? uh, uh, or a monkey is a primate and so on. But uh, uh, aggregation uh, offers the concept of containment. Uh, this contains this, this contains this and so on. So, even aggregation brings about a uh, kind of abstraction that is uh, you are uh, uh, you are covering up unnecessary details. If I am not uh, really uh, required to know what is the structure of this offering, uh, I, I do not need to really uh, worry about that. Okay. So, so this slide here uh, shows that uh, uh, shows the relationship between offering and offering that is uh, one course offering requires another course offering. 
okay. So, uh, uh, let us say course number uh, uh, A uh, requires or, or uh, has a prerequisite that some other course let us say Z has to be uh, taken up by the student, okay. So, uh, a course offering of A. Uh, requires a course offering of Z. So, uh, 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 so, so without Z being in the database, I cannot have a course offering of A. Okay. So, uh, here the abstraction basically throws away all details which uh, 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 that talks about what exactly an, uh, an offering is about. Okay. So, uh, so, so with that, uh, uh, we, we have covered the major parts in uh, the enhanced uh, ER notation or, or uh, EER notation. So, before we uh, conclude this session. Uh, let us take up a, a small uh, example of a, of a university database and see how or, or in which kinds of situations do we get this uh, 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 inheritance and generalization and specialization. How, how do we go about identifying that uh, we might probably generalize here or we might probably specialize here and so on. Okay? Now, take up a small uh, university database. Now, now, this example here is by no means exhaustive. I mean, uh, uh, we, we cannot build a uh, 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 build a complete database in the in the course of a session like this, but uh, uh, I'm uh, uh, we're just trying to see what, what kinds of uh, uh, what kinds of typical uh, problems or typical kinds of uh, uh, issues that that can uh, arise here. So some basic entity types. So each university has a student, and of course uh, several other entity types. Uh, I'm uh, again uh, I'm abstracting away unnecessary details. That is students, faculty members, and uh, staff, and so on and so forth. Okay. So so let us say we have identified. Uh, a basic as uh, entity type called student. Okay, now uh, 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 we, we then go about uh, uh, adding some attributes for students. We uh, note that uh, each student is given a roll number, uh, which uniquely identifies that student as long as the student is in the university. Okay, each student has a name, each student has a gender, a date of birth, address, and and so on. Okay, and then we go about looking at uh, uh, other entity types. Let us say. Uh, 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 oh, the, we, we say that oh, a faculty is an entity type, okay? And then we uh, we, we, uh, we talk about uh, uh, what are the attributes that that characterizes uh, a faculty member, okay? Then we come out with some uh, uh, some more attributes like this. Let's say uh, each faculty has an employee number, uh, each faculty has has a name uh, uh, and uh, and a gender and date of birth and address and so on, okay? Now, uh, uh, if you see uh, uh, if if you see student and faculty. Uh, they look quite similar already. Okay, then we identify, let us say, some kind of non-teaching staff, and then we see that uh, even they have the, the same kinds of uh, uh, attributes. That is, employee number, name, gender, date of birth, uh, address, and so on. Okay, so which uh, 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 tells us that we are actually uh, looking at different uh, entities of the same generalized class. Okay, so, uh, so so what kinds of uh, uh, generalization can we make out of these three different classes? If you see uh, uh, staff and faculty, there is hardly any difference between uh, uh, <coughs> between the two uh, uh, entity types. But between faculty, staff, and uh, student, uh, there are uh, certain uh, 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 certain differences. Okay, so, um, uh, so so how do we identify these uh, uh, these these differences here? Okay, so so. Uh, uh, this this brings us to a generalization and specialization tree. Okay, uh, we we see that faculty and staff can both be categorized as employees. Okay, and uh, they have the same uh, key called called employee number. On the other hand, the same uh, the, the the key called employee number cannot identify a student. A student is given a roll number. Okay, so uh, uh, employee and student uh, do not belong to the uh, 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 same uh, level as say faculty, but uh, they belong to the same. Uh, uh, entity type called person. Okay. Now, what are the properties of this person entity type? Uh, ev everything else that was common between the three entity types. Uh, what are the common attributes between the three entity types? Name, gender, date of birth, address. Okay. So, uh, so, so the attributes that go into person would, would be all of these uh, uh, attributes: name, gender, date of birth. Uh, uh, address and so on, which uh, which all of them share, uh, whether it's a student or a faculty or staff, all of them share. Okay. Similarly, we can uh, uh, we start looking at uh, certain associations. Let us say uh, uh, a faculty works in uh, a department, okay, and a faculty heads department, 
and, and we identify certain kinds of uh, 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 association constraints that says that uh, uh, n number of faculty members may work in a department while uh, only one faculty member may head a department. Okay? And uh, uh, we also identify some more associations which say that uh, 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 n number of students may be uh, registered in a particular department. Okay? And uh, uh, we, we can also find some aggregations which, uh, which says that uh, uh, a project uh, uh, involves particular department or a project is headed by a faculty member and, uh, and a faculty member belongs to a particular department and we see that this whole thing can, can be aggregated into an entity type called sponsored project. Okay? So, uh, a sponsored project means that there has to be a project entity which is uh, involving a particular department and is headed by a particular faculty member and so on. Okay? So, the uh, whole uh, uh, schema uh, uh, is, is aggregated into the sponsored project entity type. Okay? We can also see certain higher order relationships. For example, uh, uh, let us say uh, uh, some foundation, uh, uh, some organization or uh, non-governmental organization or, or, or whatever supports uh, a particular project okay? uh, and a particular department. So, so again we, we, we see here that the foundation supports department on this project. Okay? And uh, we can see that uh, uh, we cannot reduce it to uh, binary relationships. Uh, foundations may support sponsored project and may support uh, departments, but, uh, but, but the ternary relationship says that for this project and for this department, this foundation is, give, uh, is supporting. Okay? So, uh, 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 and, and have a look at this higher order re re relationship here. Uh, uh, let us say um, I have a relationship that says, a faculty member collaborates with some other faculty member on a particular project. Okay? So, so, note the double use of this faculty uh, entity type. That is, uh, 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 this faculty member collaborates with this faculty member on a particular project. Okay? And uh, so, one faculty member, probably the, the, the head of the project, uh, may collaborate with n other faculty members on n other, uh, on, uh, on n different projects. Okay? Now, uh, 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 you can reduce it like this. That is, uh, uh, a faculty member collaborates with other faculty members, and the same collaboration extends to project. However, you can't reduce it like this. That is, a faculty member collaborates with another faculty member and works on a project because we are going to lose semantics. So, uh, so that brings us to the end of uh, 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 the second session of. Uh, 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 enhanced entity relationship uh, concepts. So, uh, before we conclude, let us briefly uh, go through the different uh, 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 concepts that we learned today. The first concept that we learned was about generalization and specialization, which uh, where uh, uh, you achieve abstraction using an ease a relationship. Okay. So, uh, 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 in in a generalization and specialization uh, uh, relationship, uh, any entity of the uh, uh, general class uh, can be replaced by any entity of the special class. Or, or, or the specialist class without losing semantics. Only then uh, will you be able to say that my generalization is correct. Okay? Uh, it need not always be correct. Uh, 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 just because something uh, uh, looks like ESA uh, would hold does not mean that the, 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 uh, uh, the, the generalization is, uh, is correct. Okay? Uh, so, uh, uh, we, we saw the notion of inheritance that is each specialized class or, or a subclass inherits all attributes including key uh, attributes and uh, constraints and, and relationships from the uh, generalized class. And we also saw the notion of overlapping subclasses and disjoint subclasses and, uh, and, and how to build a uh, entity type using union types or, or categories. And, and we saw the notion of uh, higher order relationships and how they cannot be reduced to lower order relationships without losing semantics. And the final uh, concept that we saw today was uh, the, the notion of aggregation, which is again a kind of abstraction relationship, but however, uh, which uh, 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 which establishes the notion of containment rather than ease uh, that is uh, abstracted by uh, the, the, the specialization uh, uh, relationship. So, so that brings us to the, uh, to the end of this uh, second session on uh, enhanced entity relationship concepts.